We are going through an identity crisis as human beings. We don't identify and recognize ourselves or participate in this reality from the perceptional reality of a human being. We do, it, we do it from gender, we do it from race, we do it from religion, we do it from blah, blah, blah. We do it from all these different things, but we don't participate in this reality with the perceiving reality as a human being. And no matter how you look at race, gender, or any of the other things that we participate, class, any of these other things, every one of those things participates in reality from some form of feeling as though they're a victim. It's just psychologically programmed in. So we need to remember that we're human beings. We need to think and feel and see like human beings because that's what the whole industrialized civilization, civilizing process was about and is about, is to, er to erase our ability to recognize ourselves as human beings. This is about altering perception of reality. This is how you change spiritual perceptions of reality. You get the human being to no longer understand being a human being and then you've altered their spiritual reality man and you really have major big time and after that it's always about catch up it's a human being so we need to remember that whatever whatever it is that we're dealing with we need to think like human beings our power and this is where it's important to, to understand about being a human being because we don't recognize ourselves as a human right if we recognize ourselves as human beings. Human. Bone, flesh, and blood. All right? It's made up of the DNA. We're, our DNA, we're made up of the metals, minerals, and liquids of the earth. We are shapes of the earth. We have being. All things of the earth are made up of the... They have the same DNA. Everything of the earth. Same metals, minerals, and liquids make everything of the earth. Everything of the earth has being. We all have being. Our being comes from our relationship to the sun-sky universe. It's, it's literally like sunlight. That's like the sperm that brings life to the water-bearing womb that is the earth. So our relationship as human beings to the reality of power is in our relationship to that reality. Now, being, our power, all right? So we're in this perceptional and technologic reality where we, we know that they can take the flesh and blood that's called uranium and put it through a mining process in the fossils and convert its being into a form of energy to run a system. Well, they do that to us. <laughs> Take the being part of human, right? And through mining our minds, through the indoctrination and programming of how to perceive reality, they use our intelligence. They use our minds, all right, to mine the energy, our being, and turn it into a form of energy to run their system. And they do this because we're human beings. This is why we have to remember who we are. Now we, and we know that when you take, when, when you take the other life, life forms, being is, is a life form. So whether it's a stone life form, when you take the other life forms, right, and you put them through this mining process, it leaves behind poison and toxic waste. And we're, we're aware of that. Well, when you mine the being part of human, all right, it leaves behind poison, and toxic waste and the poison and toxic waste are the fears the doubts and the insecurities all right that become a part of our perceptional of re perceptional reality so once the mining has taken place we no longer rem remember we're human beings and we're participating in reality based upon our perception of reality through our inabilities our fears our doubts and our insecurities get behind the bravado i mean away from the the bravado and the mask and <laughs> all the paint and stuff right down to the reality Basically, we participate in this reality based upon our perception of our inabilities. Now, take that, all right? Now, how many of you have ever had a moment of feeling powerless when you were sitting in a room, all right, or had this feeling powerless, all right, and through your fears and your doubts and your insecurities, how bad can you make yourself feel? And then, how does that affect the people around you? All right? Well, then, there's an obvious contradiction here. You're not powerless. They have just been programmed to believe we're powerless while we're using our power, all right, to disrespect ourselves and everything around us in a negative way. And every bit of that was programmed into how, we're, into how we perceive reality. So it's not about powerlessness. It's about recognizing who we are and using that power in a healthy way. So it's really an issue of coherence. 
If we, if we understand that we're human beings and we access our power through co clear and coherent use of our intelligence, then we manifest. All right? Then we can create and manifest the reality that we need. And we have to understand we do it all the time because if we sit around and make ourselves feel miserable, then we're manifesting that reality. See, so it's just a matter of a slight perception, <laughs> shift of perception of, of how we perceive reality, the power of our intelligence. See, now, and everyone that wants a spiritual relationship to life and whatever the spiritual quest is to me, in my own mind, and I mean no disrespect to anybody, you know, I, to me, it isn't going to be real to the Creator until we use the gifts that the Creator gave us in the way the Creator gave them to us. See, it's all of it, it's lip service. You know, well, I'm sorry, but lip service isn't going to synchronize us with our power. To show respect to our Creator, then we need to show the respect. We need to respect the intelligence our Creator gave us and use it clearly and coherently. See, th th this is how the prayers get answered. This is how the thing starts to happen. Because we're, we're adding coherent, we're, we're introducing coherency into the reality of energy. If there's anything that this predator energy fears, anything that they fear, it's a clear, coherent, thinking human being. They don't care if you got a gun, a bomb. They don't care if you hijack air. They don't care about any of that because they got more guns, more bombs, more airplanes. They invented the gun, guns, the bombs, and the airplanes. They don't care. They, it, see, because that feeds into the energy of chaos and incoherency. To use the intelligence as clearly and coherently as possible. Now, so the, so a way, a part of the programming has taken effect. A, a way, a part, a part of the way that it has worked, is they have turned the human beings into citizens and religions and things. All right, but they have taken away our ability to think. I mean, they haven't really taken away because the ability's there, but they've, but they've taken away us, our understanding that we have that ability. They have replaced thinking with believing. All right? Now, I never... Just, you know a little poll as you wander around reality? How many times do you hear people say, I think, versus how many times do you hear people say, I believe? Well, believing and thinking, they're two different things. <laughs> All right? All right? And actually, believe has a lie right in the middle. <laughs> All right? Now, think about that. Because <laughs> actual reality is, if I, <laughs> if I believe, I mean in reality, that means I don't know. <laughs> Why don't I just say it? If you believe, that means you don't know. But you won't go around and have conversations with people saying, I don't know this, I don't know that. So you just go around and say, well, I believe this, I believe that. <laughs> it, it's a nice little trick, but it's just keeping us completely disconnected from the reality of our power. See, it's like every, it's a vibratory, everything about energy, it's a vibratory reality. I mean, we project electromagnetic thought in scientific terms, <laughs> right? So everything. So words are sounds that we make. See, and thoughts are things, are, are thoughts are way, it's a different kind of sound that we're sending out there. And it has its own vibratory thing. So the words that we make, the sounds that we make should have something to do, I, I think, all right, in a tonal way, vibrating with what the thinking is doing. See, so I think that they created language, see, that they alter these, am I confusing? That's good. <laughs> so, I, so I think they've taken language, see, and they've created certain word sounds that neutralize what's being thought, just in the vibratory thing, because everything's about energy. So, because, and as an example, so when I sit around and say, I believe this and I believe that, that means I'm not going to think about it. It just means, plain and simply put, I'm not going to think about it, because I already believe it. And that's the way the, sh the thinking process gets shut down. Because when we look at the situation that we're in individually within our lives, and I'm, the, the, predator, the predator thing is there and it's very real and, and it cannot be ignored away. But when we look at our own lives, whether it's in our individual lives or what's going on around us, how much coherency am I bringing to the table? Or how much am I bringing to the table that just basically 
based upon my reliefs, uh, beliefs. And there's a distinction between, see, I think we should think and feel with our feelings. I think we, I don't think we should believe and emotionally react to our beliefs about the reality of our power, synchronizing with our power, all right? Because we can outthink them. It's the only chance we have. We'll never outfight them. We can outthink them. That's why they fear coherence. But the 17,000 page thing, I know what I did. I'm just crazy and I lived crazy and was wild and I got away with as much as I could. But I didn't really commit any crimes. You know what I mean? Well, technically. <laughs> <laughs> And I represented no threat. So why would they, why would they do all these papers? Because I have the ability occasionally to be coherent. And, they, and it kind, and usually, usually it works in front of people. The incoherent stuff got its own. They don't like a lot of people around. <laughs> but it made me think. Well, because all I did was think. I mean, all I did was talk. But if I may, but see, it's, there's something in there. See, they don't want us thinking. They want us to vote. <laughs> they don't want us to think, <laughs> right? <laughs> right? They, they, want, they want us, they want us to, uh, they want us to have unsynchronized communications with the Creator. So that's what they gave us religion for, <laughs> right? So we couldn't synchronize our communication with the Creator, right? Because in reality, our communication with the Creator is between us and the Creator. And it's how we participate in this reality. And religion, I'm going to... There's a difference between spiritual and religion. Spirituality is about responsibility. And that's, you know, use your intelligence clearly and coherently the way Creator wanted us to responsibility. Religion is about irresponsibility. Because in, in responsibility, you take responsibility. <laughs> right? In religious indoctrination, you give up responsibility when you agree that there's something wrong with you for being born and therefore you have to submit to the authority and chain, chain of command. Then you're giving up responsibility. And so it's kind of <laughs> devious. See, so many people, I mean, it's about keeping us from synchronizing our energy and our coherence. So there are many millions and millions of people that are trying to create, going through religion because they think that's going to create the solution, but in the end it gets neutralized in many ways because you've got, a, as an example, you've got all these, I'll use the Catholic Church as, an, and I'm not, this, this is just news, and I, you know, I'm reporting the news. <laughs> you know, th this whole pedophile thing that's been going on. So you got all these good Catholic people that are out there praying, right? they want good stuff, but the gangsters at the top, you know, they're over there having fun with the little boys and girls. You know, something messed up here, see, so... So for the people, pray to the Creator. Just pray to the Creator, it's between us and the Creator. And understand that that's, that's really any communication that's spiritually really going to happen. It's going to happen between us like that. We don't need that middleman. And we don't. And it's about, and the other thing is not to judge anything. It's not our right to judge. It's our responsibility to recognize the reality of the situation and make clear, coherent decisions based upon the reality of the situation that we recognize. If we're going to go around judging things, then we'll never recognize it because, because our look at it is limited by our judgments. 